Okay, so picking up from the previous video, um, let's talk a little bit about um, a couple more pieces of terminology that we'll be using extensively throughout the course. Okay, so uh, remember the leading entry is the first non-zero entry in a uh, row in a matrix in uh, echelon form. So um, it turns out that um, the leading entries in the reduced echelon form and in any echelon form are in the same positions, I mean same location in the matrix. Um, so here's the one we were just looking at. Uh, there was a leading entry in the 1-1, one, one, first row, first column, second row, second column, third row, third column, and in the reduced echelon form, same positions in the matrix. So it's convenient to talk about those positions as opposed to the actual value. The leading entry is the actual value, but we really would are more interested in the position, and so we call that a pivot position. So a pivot position is a position that contains a leading entry. So the 1-1, one, 2-2, one, 3-3 two, two, three, three positions would be pivot positions in this matrix. Okay, so as I said, the leading entry is the actual value. The pivot position is the location. So the leading entry here is 1. It's in the first row, first column. So that's the pivot position. Here, this row, the leading entry is negative 2. It's in the second row, second column position. Okay, and then one other uh, term is pivot column. Pivot column is a column that contains a pivot position. So I'll be using the terms pivot position and pivot column till probably the last day of the semester. So uh, you will hear that quite a bit to make sure you understand what those are. Okay, two more terms. Uh, a basic variable is one that corresponds to a pivot column. And a free variable is one that corresponds to a non-pivot column. Okay, so for each column, uh, except for the augmented column, you know, uh, there's a corresponding variable. So if you look and in, in there's a, a pivot column, that means that variable is basic. If the column is not a pivot column, that means that variable is called free. Okay, so let's look at how all this relates to solving the system of equation. So I've got a tail of three matrices. Here's number one. Now notice this matrix. Uh, if we, it's already in echelon form, right? Here's leading entry, zeros underneath, leading entry, zeros underneath, leading entry. You don't need to worry about zeros underneath it. So we start the process of uh, solving the system. So we start with row three, and here's the equation that corresponds to row three. And if I simplify the left side, it's just zero. So end up with zero equals seven. Well. Uh, we know that can't happen, so that is our clue that uh, this system has no solution. Okay, so if the echelon form of an augmented matrix has a row of this form, okay, where on the left you've got all zeros, then in the augmented column you have something not zero. Okay, so all zeros on the left not zero on the right. That's what we have here. All zeros on the left, not zero on the right. Then the corresponding system has no solution. Okay, so that's the marker. That's what you need to look for to see if your system is consistent or not. All right, matrix number two. Change that first one just a little bit, and I put uh, a non-zero value here. And so we got... Uh, uh, leading entry, zeros underneath, leading entry, zeros underneath, another leading entry. So this one's in echelon form. So we solve, and this is the same one we solved earlier, so I'm not going to go back through that, and this was our solution. Um, and so this one, what? Has a unique solution. The system is consistent. It's consistent because it doesn't have a row uh, where there's all zeros and then something not zero. And it has no free variables. That's the key here for unique solution. Notice that there's a pivot position in every column of the coefficient part of the matrix. So pivot position in column one, so x1 is basic. 
pivot position in column 2, so x2 is basic. Pivot position in column 3, so x3 is basic. So system is consistent. All the variables are uh, basic, has no free variables, and so we get a unique solution. All right, one more matrix. Notice here that um, we've got a row of all zeros. This one is in echelon form, but we've got a row of all zeros. Let's look for just a second. X1 here has a pivot position. Uh, the column 2 has a pivot position. Column 3 does not have a pivot position. So that means that we have a free variable, right? X1 and X2 are basic, but X3 is a free variable because there's no pivot position in column 3. Okay, so if we try to solve it, um, here's what we get from row 2. Negative 2x2 plus 5x3 equals 7. We solve for x2 and notice that it's written in terms of x3. And then we back up to row 1 and uh, we've got x1 minus 3x2 equals 5. We substitute in for x2 and here's what we end up with for x1. Notice it's also written in terms of x3. Notice that that's all we've got, these two equations, and uh, so there's nothing constraining x3, and that's because x3 is a free variable. And so if we write our solution, here's what it looks like. Um, and in your book, that's what they call the general form of the solution. Okay, so this is just, for x1, x2, what we just computed, x3 is free. This is the general form of the solution. Okay. So notice that we can plug in any value for x3 that we want. And any value of x3 produces uh, a different solution. So that means we have an infinite number of solutions to this system. Um, the easiest thing, if you want, an, if you want a specific solution, uh, the easiest thing is to just plug in 0 for x3. If you do that, then uh, you get x1 is negative 11 halves, x2 negative 7 halves, x3 is 0. All right, or you could plug in x3 equals 1 um, and get another solution. Um, I always tell my students, plug in your favorite number. So if your favorite number is pi, plug in pi for x3. And if you do that, then uh, here's what you get for x1 and x2. Okay, so you, no matter what value of x3 you plug in, that generates a different solution. And so you have an infinite number of solutions. And so the bottom line is oops, okay, that if the system is consistent, and that's a key, you got to make sure it's consistent to start with, and has at least one free variable, then you will have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so let's recap. When you're solving a system of equations, number one, put the uh, augmented matrix in echelon form. Number two, if you have a row of this form, all right, and this form is, again, all zeros on the left, something not zero in the augmented column, then that means the corresponding system has no solution. At that point, stop, because you got no solution. If that's not the case, then that means the system is consistent. So at that point, you look to see if there are free variables or not. If there are no free variables, that means the system has a unique solution. If it's consistent and there's at least one free variable, then you have an infinite number of solutions. Okay? So that's really your algorithm there um, for how to determine how to solve a system and determine which case it is. Is it no solution? Is it a unique solution or an infinite number of solutions? Okay, and that is it for this video.